Garden. A lot of familiar faces have shown up to get an in-person look at Gennady Golovkin. Faces familiar to you over the years, such as Susan Sarandon, the great actress. Rosie Perez, one of the most prolific of all boxing fans, comes to a lot of fights. Light heavyweight titleist Sergei Kovalev, as we showed you, he was here, trains in the same camp with Magomed Abdusalamov down in Florida. True Blood star Anna Paquin is at ringside tonight, as is another HBO drama star, Steve Buscemi of Boardwalk Empire. And one of the hottest performers in television, Louis C.K. of his eponymous show. And as we showed you earlier, Vladimir Klitschko and his fiancee, Hayden Panettiere of the primetime television show, Nashville, both here as well. Vladimir is the promoter of record, given that the central promoter here is K2, which is Gennady Golovkin's promoter. A special treat coming up on HBO on the 16th of November, two weeks from tonight, as we debut the television version of Mike Tyson, The Undisputed Truth, the broadcast television version of the one-man show that Mike has been fronting around the country for the past year. A unique life, a unique perspective on it. Let's take a look ahead. Thank you for coming out tonight. Welcome to my living room. You know, I really don't know much about my mother. But I remember her drinking a lot and always angry, fighting. So she drank to cover up the pain. And I suppose my addiction started here with her. See, I was born with an addictive gene and it still haunts me to this day. The great strength of the show is this extraordinary life that you've had and your ability to be so direct and honest about everything you've experienced. Did you have any fear or reluctance about opening up all the dark corners of your life the way you have? No, um, most of the stories I was telling was from um, um, stories from the newspapers and stuff. But most of the time, when the show's over and they come backstage, the biggest um, question I, I hear is, now I understand why that happened. Everybody knew I did this, but they didn't understand why and how this occurred. <laughs> No, but speaking of forgiveness, I'm really very grateful that um, Amanda forgave me for this. Oh, I know that fucking hurt so much. I went from the 10th hated man on the planet, which I could handle, but to un numero uno after I bit the motherfucker, right? So, you know, that's some hard shit. You spent many years at the middle of a circus, baddest man on the planet. Is a part of the reward of the show being able to go out and say to people, I'm not exactly who you thought I was. Well, you know, in that stage, that just comes from my insecurity. Um, I wanted to be that guy. No one's the baddest man on the planet, uh, but I just, um, it just sound good, you know what I mean? And, um, it patronized with my ego at the time. Those former titles that I had, they absolutely did nothing now. They don't mean anything. I'm trying to um, just grasp the idea of just being a human being and get the respect for my children and people who I've, I have to make amends with. Many of you may remember, I'm the guy that used to knock motherfuckers out in less than 30 seconds. <laughs> Thank you. And I knock a motherfucker out tonight, too. Shit, get out of the <laughs> country. Probably the biggest thing the show has done is to put you back in touch with your millions of fans in a very personal way. Uh, was that necessary and rewarding to you, or is it a surprise how good that feels? You know, um, younger kids come up 15 years old and they say, hey, mommy, daddy, that's Mike Tyson, the actor. And their mother has to explain to them that, no, he's a fighter and this and that. And I said, thank you very much, sir. I'm, gonna, I'm very proud of being the champion. One, left hook to the jaw, boom. Two, right hook to the jaw, boom. Three, left uppercut. Four, right uppercut. Five, left hook to the liver. Six, right hand to the spleen. Seven, jab to the head. Eight, jab to the body. Fuck, I'm glad I don't have to do that for a living no more. What's the most fun part of the show to do? I oh, don't know. When I'm fighting Mitch Green. <laughs> fighting Mitch Green. Mitch Blood Green. Yeah, I think that's pretty awesome. And, and then when Mitch comes in, Mitch comes in like this. Bitch ass nigga, what the fuck you doing in my neighborhood, you bitch ass nigga? I like them because I get a chance to put the wig on. I got the jerry curl and I'm fighting. And I just thought that was pretty awesome. The crowd loves that. How does the experience of walking out on that stage compare with the ring walk you used to make as the heavyweight champion of the world? It's a lot. It's pretty similar. Instead of thinking about the great fight of the day, I think about 
all the great stage entertainers and stuff. Burt Williams, Julie Garland, you know, Sammy Davis Jr. I think about all those guys as well. And hopefully one day that I could reign in their presence just like I reigned in the presence of my, my heroes. That means more to me than $100 billion. I want to be respected by my peers. Get an unfiltered look at Mike Tyson in the Spike Lee directed Mike Tyson Undisputed Truth as Iron Mike opens up about all his career and personal highs and lows in this HBO film special. Mike Tyson Undisputed Truth premieres Saturday, November 16 at 8 p.m. right here on HBO. All right, so let's get ready now for the main event and the much anticipated Madison Square Garden appearance of Gennady Gennadyevich, Gennadyevich, I should say, Golovkin of Kazakhstan the most rapidly burgeoning star profile in boxing at this moment. Roy Jones, uh, Curtis Stevens talked his way into this fight with a lot of big talk and has tried to get under Gennady Golovkin's skin. But one point that he made to us yesterday face to face is, hey, I'm a guy who used to fight as a light heavyweight. I've come down 15 pounds in weight. That's why I'm such a massive puncher in the middleweight division and Golovkin hadn't seen anybody like me. A valid point? Yeah, that's a very valid point, Jim. He did come down from a uh, light heavyweight, especially as an amateur. Uh, some of his early pro fights was a light heavyweight. So he has been used to dealing with bigger targets and bigger people. But on the other hand, we heard rumors that Triple G knocked down or out one of the light heavyweight champions with a body shot. So when you did it with in a Triple sparring G, session, yeah, in a spar sparring session, but still it happened with 20 ounce hear. gloves on. With 20 ounce gloves <laughs> yeah. on, that says a lot. So with Triple G, it really doesn't matter, like he said, whether you're a dream middleweight or a light heavyweight. Can you take his punch? That's the question to be answered tonight. And it's precisely that kind of gym legend which defines what's happening with Golovkin at this stage of his career. And Max Kellerman, we reach the point now where the overarching question about Golovkin is, okay, can he be the first? Can he do what Vladimir Klitschko and Vitaly Klitschko effectively declined to do, which is to try to become the first Eastern European crossover star in the American boxing culture? In effect, the Euro Pacquiao. What are his chances? Yeah, I think he can, but it's not going to be the kind of typical lazy way we in boxing like to pump up stars, which is to say to an ethnic or national audience, because there aren't enough Kazakhstani fight fans in the world for that to happen. So Gennady Golovkin is going to have to do, we saw, just saw Mike Tyson, what Mike Tyson once did, what, as you mentioned, Jim, Manny Pacquiao once did, what Roberto Duran once did, not only be an exciting attacking fighter, but be the baddest man on the planet. Be a guy who people look at and say, he might be the best pound for pound fighter in the world. Oh yeah, and by the way, he always brings it. Golovkin always brings it. Can he become the baddest? All right, let's take a look at the tail of the tape now for Gennady Golovkin against Curtis Stevens. And you see the three-year age advantage for Stevens. Golovkin, a 2004 Olympic medalist, is already 31 years old. But Gennady's got a three-and-a-half-inch height advantage over Stevens, who was once a five-foot-seven-inch light heavyweight. Arm length, a two-inch advantage for Golovkin, measured from the armpit to the end of the fist, could be meaningful when he throws his jab. They both weighed in a fraction under the 160-pound middleweight limit. Tail of the tape is done. Now, quickly, the divisional picture for the middleweight division, Max Kellerman. Sergio Martinez still the lineal champ, but there's a consensus forming over the last couple years that Golovkin's the best middleweight. He fights the best puncher in the division tonight, Curtis Stevens. Miguel Cotto live right now after his last performance for a shot at Martinez. Quillen, a top fighter in the division. And then you see the other various belt holders and likely contenders. All right. Since the age of five, Curtis Stevens' boxing career has been guided by his uncle and his current trainer, Andre Rozier. But the Brooklyn-born Stevens is dedicating tonight's fight to someone else who was the source of inspiration for him at an early age. Well, I'm from Brownsville, Brooklyn. Um, started boxing at the age of five. My uncle Andre, which is my trainer, took me to the gym. I was a little kid, like, I loved the fight. Growing up in Brownsville, you're not supposed to make it anywhere. Zab Judas from Brooklyn, Riddick Bow, Mike Tyson, Shannon Briggs. So being that I have established my career in boxing, and as one of the elite fighters, is a great thing. Victor Roundtree, he's, uh, well, like, he's like an uncle of mine, a very great friend. He passed away a couple weeks ago. It hurt, it hurt a lot at home, but I have a task to do come Saturday, so I gotta be focused on that. Victor always, 
wanted me to come a world champ. Being that he's not here to acknowledge it with me come Saturday, I'm done in this kid's fight tomorrow. And here comes Curtis Stevens with a lot of the house backing the Brooklyn born, Brooklyn raised fighter. He's actually from the Brownsville section, the same area that produced Mike Tyson, Riddick Bowe, and Zab Judah, whom he said he knew when he was a little boy. Yes, a very good background, very good resume of fighters from this area. And I think he's coming tonight to try to make his mark on the sport of boxing. And because he's fighting as in, in his hometown, as Roy Jones pointed out in the Alvarado Provodnikov fight, he's going to have to bring it. He's going to have to fight the way he's promoted himself into this fight as a fighter who brings it, who doesn't quit, who continues to throw bombs at his opponent because Golovkin is going to be there throwing bombs of his own. Three first round knockouts in his last four fights. And he's the underdog. Because tonight marks the fourth time Gennady Golovkin will fight in this calendar year. Up to this point, 2013, nothing less than spectacular for Triple G. Golovkin's year began January 19 on HBO versus Gabriel Rosado. Golovkin had the flu that week. Thought was given to canceling the fight. But in round two, Golovkin cut Rosado on the left eye with a hard punch. And the next five rounds were a bloodbath until it was stopped in round seven. Just over two months later, he took on Japanese veteran Nobuhiro Ishida. Round three, one right hand shot, a candidate for knockout of the year. June 29, Golovkin against Matthew Macklin in what was expected to be his toughest fight. And maybe it was. Who can tell? In round three, Golovkin's left hand to the ribcage folded Macklin up. And Triple G had his third knockout win of 2013. Roy Jones, he knows all the hype. He's aware of what's being said about him, where he currently stands in the sport. Now he goes against the kind of puncher he probably hasn't faced before. First time in a setting like this. Are there nerves for Gennady Golovkin tonight? Yes, there has to be nerves, Jim. Although he falls to all types of fighters as an amateur, he never faced a guy in 10-ounce clubs and no headgear that can punch like Curtis Stevens. And he's acknowledged it. Golovkin says, look, he's talking a lot. I can not, you know, I'm here to knock him out, but the reality is I also can get knocked out. This fight ain't going the distance, Jim. Thank heaven. I'd like to be half right tonight. <laughs> and by the way, official attendance has been announced as 4,618. That is two tickets short of a sellout. So if you happen to be watching this out on 8th Avenue right now, and you want to come in, there are still two tickets to be sold to this boxing match. And look match. what Golovkin has done. Without a big ethnic following, there are 5,000 people more or less here. The place is electric. It's jumping. How long has he even been fighting in this country? Not that long. Let's go to ring announcer Michael Buffer for the official introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, from the home of legends, Madison Square Garden, New York City, New York, USA, this is the featured bout of the evening. 12 rounds of boxing for the WBA IBO Middleweight Championship of the World. Presented to you by K2 Promotions in association with main events, Triple G Promotions and Madison Square Garden. Sanctioned by the New York State Athletic Commission, Chairperson Melvina Lathan. WBA President, Gilberto Mendoza Sr. IBO President, Ed Levine. At ringside, the three judges scoring will be Max DeLuca, Michael Pernick, and Tom Schreck. And inside the ring, in charge of the action at the bell, referee Harvey Dock. And now, the officials are ready, the fighters are ready. So for the thousands in attendance and the millions watching around the world on HBO, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready to rumble!
Fighting out of the blue corner, standing with head trainer Andre Rozier, wearing brown of visual weight, 159 one quarter pounds. As a professional, 25 victories, including 18 knockouts with three defeats from Brownsville, Brooklyn, New York. The challenger, the power punching KO artist, Curtis. It's my time, Stevens. And fighting out of the red corner with his head trainer, Abel Sanchez. Wearing gray with black, officially weighing 159, one half pounds. As a professional, 27 fights, 27 victories, including 24 knockouts with 14 straight knockouts and the highest KO percentage in middleweight world champions history. From Karaganga, Kazakhstan, the reigning, defending, undefeated WBA IBO middleweight champion of the world, Gennady Triple G. Let's go, boxers. We went over the instructions already. Trunk levels are good. Obey my commands at all times. Touch gloves. Good luck. Curtis Stevens' uncle and trainer, Andre Rozier, says there are many avenues to a knockout. Concussion, breaking down from physical abuse, psychological submission. Almost no one thinks this fight is going the distance. What avenue are we about to take? And Jim, one more thing I want to say. There was one more fascinating fighter from Brooklyn, and his name happens to be Mark Breland. We go, guys. Another knockout puncher. You better believe it. <laughs> Round one begins. Very quickly, let's bring in our rules expert, Steve Weisfeld. Steve, tell us something about referee Harvey Duck. Harvey is a 10-year pro ref who is a former amateur standout. He's very quick to respond to situations and quicker than most referees to break fighters. Harvey gives boxers in major fights the benefit of the doubt to fight their way out of trouble. So I do not expect a premature stoppage tonight. Curtis Stevens' big shot is his left hook. He just tried one against Golovkin moments ago. Golovkin lands a left hook of his own. Stevens hits you on a chin with a left hook. It doesn't matter who you are. You got to go. <laughs> Well, Triple G is doing a good job starting out early with his jab, trying to keep Stevens away from him so he can't land that left hook. Golovkin has a stiff, penetrating jab. Think George Foreman. Think Lennox Lewis. Stevens is at five feet seven inches and with a two-inch reach disadvantage from the armpit to the end of the fifth, not likely to want to be in a jabbing contest with Golovkin. Golovkin also throws very hard body shots. So does Stevens. There's a little left hook upstairs for Curtis, and now a right cross. Stevens also is a pretty quick fighter, and he himself had a pretty good amateur background. Very quick fighter. Golovkin lands a right cross, first one he throws. Stevens takes it very well. Golovkin with a little straight right lead. Has a look of tremendous determination on his face here. Has the look of a guy that knows what's in front of him. He's bringing that right hand pretty far back against the guy with a good left hook, Roy. Left hook for Golovkin. Curtis Stevens has been relatively conservative through much of the first round here, keeping his gloves up and focusing on defense. Now he tries a big shot and lands a right cross. And Golovkin backs away. Not, un or not uh, the common thing to see Golovkin backing away from a guy, but he respects Stevens' power. And Good left hook. Steven's speed has him taken aback a little bit, too. 
Kind of small for Glovkin to back up, just not to give Stevenson too much room, though. Because he's the taller fighter, so no need to stay there. Make the taller fighter have to reach for you a little bit. Good right hand for Golovkin. Stevens again takes it well. His chin has shown up pretty good in the first round. And I think he landed a hook of his own in, too, Jim. Final 10 seconds of round one. Golovkin wants to punctuate the round with something. Gets in a right cross. Should we get that jab going? And once in a while, I want to see it touch the arms. Okay? Let him drop his arms a little bit. Straight right hand, once in a while, by itself. Okay? Ben, let me have a little water. Very good, but that jab has got to be established. Okay? Double, double pump yeah. the jab, too, once in a while. Deep breath. Let's double up on that jab. Here yeah. and here. Yeah. When you hit close, touch him to the Might body. Don't the hesitate there. All right, a little bounce, you'll make him miss all day. Yo, you, you're not moving to your right, baby. All right. To the right. Uh, you hear me? Use that right. jab, Kurt. Well, he ain't nothing, Kurt. Yeah. Don't every make time, him brave. Yeah, every time you push him back, baby. Don't make Come him brave. Put, put it on Quick me. hands. Quick right. hands. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Hurry up, let's go. Curtis Stevens may already have a small cut above the right eye. They were working the eyebrow in his corner. You heard them asking him to move to his right and throw some body shots when he gets close. Abel Sanchez asked Gennady Golovkin to double his jab. CompuBox numbers in the first round. Golovkin 17 out of 75. Stevens 8 out of 37. Golovkin with a 9-7 edge in power shots landed. There's an air of tension in, in the arena here as everybody waits for the fireworks, expecting something big to land. <laughs> and the threat of that has already dulled Golovkin's normal early rounds attack. And Stevens landed a left hook that knocked Golovkin's head back. And everybody wants to see how one fighter takes the other fighter's punch. There's a fighter named Darnell Boone. Almost beat Kovalev, lost a very close split decision. Knocked out Adonis Stevenson. Knocked down Andre Ward, the only pro to do it. Curtis Stevens beat him pretty easily. Stevens can fight. And because of the power, is probably the greatest threat to Golovkin in the division at the moment. He's got to figure out a way to get those shots home. Well, other than the threat that a healthy Sergio Martinez might outbox him. Several years ago was the last time we saw a healthy Sergio Martinez. That's true. That is entirely true. Not likely he'll ever reach full 100% health again. Be great to see it, though. I'm liking what we're seeing right here in front of us tonight. Not a lot has happened so far, but there is this sense of dramatic tension because of the power. It's a chess match to see who can land the power first. Who can faint who out of position and land that good clean shot. We me meanwhile, amid the chess match, Golovkin is scoring with his jab. And they asked for the same punch out of Stevenson's corner, but he's not throwing it as much. Big left hook for Golovkin. Stevens gets in a body shot. That's what his corner wanted. Right hand for Golovkin. Stevens with another little counter left hook. Misses the left hook there. Golovkin goes back to the jab. Good right hand by Golovkin. Good left hook by oh. Golovkin. And down goes Stevens. There it is. Passack Thunder in round number two. And Stevens doesn't look all that good as he gets up. And now Gennady will go for the kill. 15 seconds in the round. He runs across the ring. Bang Stevens into the ropes. Ten seconds to go in the round. Body shot. Looking upstairs. Misses with the left foot. Lands a right hand. Wobbles Stevens with it. One more right hand, and the round comes to a close. You all right, Pop? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Tell me where you are, Curtis. No, 
Exactly. You're backing up too much on them. You hear me? Yes. Come on, baby. Get your hands up. Yo, Kurt, come on. You don't fall apart mentally, baby. Right. Don't get this motherfucker, baby. Come you on, heard man. him with a hook. Yeah. But you can't make him break. DC Triple Z with a lead left hook, and he followed it by an even better left hook that sent Curtis Stevens to the canvas. The first right hook was a great setup punch. It was a beautiful lead left hook. They caught him flush on the chin, but the second one really did the damage. He see the first one, and followed by the second one. The second one right there was the real punch, real meaningful punch. And the look on Steven's face there says a thousand words. That was a face that said, wow. What said the most to me was that he got up, looked at his corner, covered up, made it through the round, and even threw a left hook back. Now Stevens lands a left hook. And this is why Golovkin's the heavy favorite here, because he has the wit, the means to land the heavy thunder. It's much more probable that he does because he's a superior technical fighter in addition to having the punching power. Well, he had been trying to show Stevens all night that his hook was just as good or better than Stevenson's. Than Stevenson's. Stevens not letting his hands go now as Golovkin jabs him into position in the corner, throws a right cross. Gets in a left hook to the body. Now Stevenson, or Stevens, fires back a counter right hand. Uppercut by Golovkin. First one he's thrown. Golovkin is being careful as he pursues his advantages because of the punching power coming back at him. And that jab is really what's setting up everything for Golovkin. Stevens corner asked for the jab, but he's not throwing it as much. Seems to be uninterested in trying to trade jabs with Golovkin. Probably worried about leaving himself open to the right hand. Golovkin has made an impression with both power shots, the left hook and the right hand. And now we'll be surprised to see a thunderous body shot by Golovkin soon here. Two big right crosses by Golovkin. Steven takes, Stevens takes them pretty well. Partially blocked both of them. left in the third round as Stevens backs into the ropes. And Golovkin looks for the opportunity to land something big. But again, hesitant to go to the body with real force <laughs> because of the power of Stevens. And the possibility of a counter shot. Doesn't right want to trade over the top by Golovkin. Doesn't want to trade a body shot for a head shot this early in the fight against a big puncher. Wear him down a little bit first. Exactly. But hard to wear a guy down when you're not going to the body. There it was. Body shot. There it was. Left hook to the liver. Right hand upstairs. Stevens throws a couple punches. Golovkin backs away. Thoroughly in control here, but being careful even as he measures Stevens for power shots. So far, the fight's gone according to Hoyle. Another body shot by Golovkin. Stevens gets out of that round. Curtis Stevens' mom, Tanya Rozier, sister of his trainer, Andre Rozier. Clearly, small case of nerves as she watches there. You're making him brave. Where's that water at? Curve. Stick to jab and press him. You making it easy for him. You got to close the gaps. You got to close the gap, Kurt. You're giving them room to work. Okay. Come on, Come on, push that motherfucker back. Give me a deep breath. Let me see that one, two. And then throw combinations. Throw combinations. Upstairs, downstairs, and back. When you go here, go to the body, too. Gennady Golovkin has the kind of relationship with Abel Sanchez that he believes will carry him all the way through his career. Copy box numbers in the third. Golovkin threw 103 punches, landed 29 of them. Stevens was 6 of 22. In other words, Golovkin landed more than Stevens threw 
Harold Letterman, how do you have it through three? <laughs> okay, Chip. I got a three rounds to that thing. 30 to 26, Gennady Golovkin. You know, Chip, this guy hardly misses a punch as I see it. I, I mean, I'm standing, sitting there watching him, and, and he's throwing out that left jam, and it just keeps landing and landing and landing. And when he throws the hook, it lands. And when he throws the right hand, it lands. I mean, if you watch this, incredibly accurate guy. He just keeps coming forward like a machine, and he's beating up Curtis Stevens. End the story. Three to nothing, Gennady Golovkin. Making Stevens keep his hands at home with his offense. That's why Stevens is not throwing so many punches. He has to be so much on the defensive that he can't punch. Stevens at least is starting to move forward now. You gotta start with that jab though, Max. When he's just walking forward, he's just leaving himself open as a target. Putting the jab out would allow him to see what, what punches to throw. Body shot by Stevens and another one. Drives Golovkin into the ropes. Best offense we've seen from Curtis Stevens since the first round. Yeah, he at least has some success coming forward, which lands a jab, wise. does Curtis Stevens. Well, the shorter fighter always is supposed to come forward anyway. Why would you fight a guy longer than you on the outside? Stevens trying to work his way into the fight. Good jab. I think you had to give Stevens at least that third round just to clear his head after the second round knockdown. Of course, of course. Watch your hands. Now let's listen to Andre Rozier in Steven's corner for a few seconds and hear what he's telling his fighter as the round progresses. Oh, big body shot by Golovkin. Think he's playing possum here, Roy, or was he hurt by the body shot? He was hurt by the body shot. Another body shot for Golovkin, this with the right hand. He's got Stevens pinned against the ropes. Oh. And now Stevens erupts with two good clean shots. And knocks Golovkin back and lands a left hook and brings some excitement to the Brooklyn fans in the crowd. Biggest rally of the fight now for Curtis Stevens. Those are clean shots he's landed. And he fought that last right hand with left hook with the right hand. Lufkin lands a, an uppercut and a left hook. Taking advantage of Stevens' offense to counter with a couple of shots down the stretch. Hey, don't let him back into this, okay? You gotta stay busy. Don't let him back into this, all right? No free shots out there. Little grease, man. What happened to it? Don't take it off, Max. Right, good, good jab, good hooks. But you gotta stay busy. You can't sit back and wait. Okay. Sometimes you gotta press him and back him up a little bit, and pop him a little bit. Doesn't have to be a hard getter. You just gotta set something up. All right? Deep breath. But good, good jab. All right? Keep him at the distance. Okay. 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 Deep breath. Just busy, he, busy, busy. He see Curtis Stevens coming forward with a one-two, followed by a little short jab hook. It was a good punch, probably his best punch of the fight. Four shots in round four, Golovkin 19 out of 51, Stevens 14 out of 31, twice as well as he had done in any previous round. On replay, you saw Golovkin actually did a good defensive job there, parrying with his shoulder and then taking most of the sting off of the left hand. Stop, stop. Don't, don't leave it out there. Let's go. That last round should have encouraged Stevenson, I mean Stevens to come forward more. Lumpkin knocking him back with the jab, lands the right hand over the top. Stevens much more aggressive than he was in the first three rounds. Now countering Golovkin's big stuff with big stuff of his own. Like lands Max, a left hook there. Like Max said, maybe his head is starting to clear now from that first round knockdown. And he's showing his hand speed. Second round knockdown. The second round. Stevens is starting to land those sweat flying punches. And you still don't get the sense that he's really connected with his money punches yet. 
Lovkin back to doubling and tripling with the jab, something he didn't do much of in rounds three and four, something which helped to set up the knockdown in round two. You don't like to see the shorter fighter back up. like the left hook got all of Golovkin, or Golovkin might not be standing right now. <laughs> Good body shot by Stevens. He's way into the fight now. He does so much better when he attacks first. Good, hook by Good left hook by Golovkin, right on the chin. Right cross lands. When Glovkin works behind that jab, it's very difficult to deal with his offense. We've seen how, Go how Stevens has reacted to a real good left hook that floored him from Golovkin. We have yet to see how Golovkin's going to react when Steven catches him with his, a real good shot flush. And that may happen based on how often Stevens has been able to land on Golovkin the last couple rounds. One thing you see here is how well Golovkin cuts off the rings. Stalking, stalking, keeping you in his sights the whole time. Saturday, November 16, make sure you catch Mike Tyson, Undisputed Truth. This HBO film special directed by Spike Lee brings Tyson's one-man show from the live stage to the TV screen later that same night on World Championship Boxing. It's the return of one of the best pound-for-pound -pound fighters in the business as super middleweight champion Andre Ward takes on undefeated challenger Edwin Rodriguez. Vladimir Klitschko again at ringside. His promotional company, K2, the promoter for Gennady Golovkin. Curtis Stevens is promoted by main events. Power shots in round five. They both landed nine. Golovkin had to throw 31 to get that. Stevens nine out of 24, but Golovkin landed 17 of 59 jabs overall, throwing 90 punches in the round. Curtis Stevens is a very compact type of a fighter. Doesn't throw too much wild, very controlled with his attack, and he does so much better when he comes forward and does not sit back and wait on Gennady Golovkin. But when he waits, Golovkin lands that jab, and it starts his offense off, and whoever gets their offense started first seems to be the benefactor of the outcome of the combinations. Saw another Golovkin wrinkle moments ago, hooking off the jab something Eastern European fighters seem to do very well. Body shot for Golovkin. Even though Golovkin's won all the rounds, Stevens is exposing a vulnerability to speed here. Then you mentioned Sergio Martinez, Jim. He's, Sergio Martinez is still very fast and, and hits sneaky hard. And this fight is a long way from over. Good right uppercut by Stevens. Checking Golovkin's chin with the right uppercut. He's landed some good shots in this round. Now Golovkin with a body shot and a right cross and momentarily hurts Stevens. Hurt him bad with that body shot. Good comeback uppercut and a right cross by Stevens. Stevens. And the left hook. Stevens Golovkin tried to measure him one more time. Yes. Right cross for Golovkin. Body shot, uppercut, right cross, right cross. Golovkin's got to be careful with that uppercut, that right uppercut. You got to be careful of everything when he's on the attack like this. Tempting to throw it against a shorter fighter <laughs> leaning in, but with a counter left hook like that, it's a dangerous punch to throw for Golovkin. Another right cross lands for Golovkin. Very active round for Gennady. He wobbled Stevens with a couple of shots and is still seeking a knockout as the round progresses. Good left hook for Stevens. That's the counter shot Golovkin has to worry about.
Golovkin's winning it, but it's a real fight as we get within 40 seconds of the midway point. Yeah, it's nothing easy for him. Another good combination for Gennady as he pins Stevens in the corner and looks to land something else big. And even as he beats Stevens up and seems to break him down, you just get this sense that Stevens remains very dangerous with his punching power. Of course he's very dangerous and they're close, so that's where his arms are most dangerous at in, in close fighting. Brilliant round for Golovkin, who did great offensive work throughout the whole three minutes. Destroy you on the road. You on we the ask road, you to baby? stay in the middle of the ring. You're losing this. Come on, baby. Kurt, get the end swell on the eye, Mike. The other eye. Listen to me. Keep in the center of the ring. Keep working from the middle of the ring. Stop backing up to those ropes. Uh, it's not a good place for you. Don't you understand that yet? Stay in the middle of the ring and keep working in the circle. Yo, yeah, we good. To me. To Here's what Gennady Golovkin doing his best up and down work. Left uppercut to the head, but left body shot, which brought the hands down. Then followed a jab with the overhand right, right crisp on the jaw. And I think his mother seen enough. She had to get out for a minute. And you can't blame him because no mother wants to watch their son take punishment like that. Golovkin in round six landed 41 out of 102. His high numbers for the fight, 18 of 47 for Stevens. And yes, you saw Stevens' mom momentarily leave the arena. Who knows whether she'll come back. Harold, you get to stay the whole fight. <laughs> and how do you have it? Look at Jim, six to nothing. 60 to 53, Gennady Golovkin. You know, Jim, you gotta give him an extra point for the knockout of round two. But I gotta tell you something, this is interesting. At the start of round five, Harvey Doc won Gennady Golovkin for measuring Curtis Stevens. And, you know, Gennady does that a lot. The clinch goes through it all the time. Look, he's doing it right now. He keep sticks up, the left up. hand out and he doesn't keep pull up. it back. Let's go. And Harvey Doc said, you know, you can't measure the guy. My interpretation is this. If the glove is closed, you can measure the guy. But Harvey Doc is telling him no. Six to nothing, get out of the left. And we're told that Mrs. Rozier, uh, or actually Tanya Rozier, excuse me, mother stop, of Curtis stop. Stevens, has returned to her seat down. at ringside. So she just took a little walk. A lot of people have to do that. I had an aunt that had to, had to walk the whole time. I fought whether I was winning or losing. She had to walk the entire time. So sometimes you just got to walk the nerves off. When Vince Dooley was coaching the Georgia Bulldogs in football, his beautiful wife, Barbara, used to walk the perimeter of the upper deck of the stadium through the entire game. <laughs> Golovkin's got a little bulldog in front of him right now. The corner wanted to know why Stevens was against the ropes. I think it was those body shots by Golovkin in the last round, but here Stevens is trying his best to stay in the middle of the ring. And now Golovkin tries to back him up again. Stevens has listened to his trainer, who told him, stay in the middle of the ring. But now Golovkin backs him to the ropes. And you heard Andre Rozier say, it's not a good place for you. This is the corner where Golovkin has hurt him twice before. Golovkin's done a great job avoiding those whistling left hook counters. Yeah, he is. But they still come here and there from Stevens. And for Golovkin, though, he doesn't really have to be this close. He should stay out with his jab and just outbox Stevens. Don't even give him a chance to land the big shots. But the Abel Sanchez style of wanting to get him out of there is making him go ahead and push the issue. And uh, the fans appreciate that kind of risk taking, and it's one of the reasons Golovkin's becoming a fan favorite. Good right hand by Stevens, backs Golovkin off. And he lands a little left hook. Just at the moment when Golovkin was trying to mount another big onslaught, Stevens finally caught him with one of those punishing power shots. Now, on the inside, when you get him up against the ropes again, I don't want you standing directly in front of him. Slide over a little bit, okay? 
Uh -huh. Slide over a little bit, palm the side, slide over, but don't shift a lot. Just slide over a little bit, okay? Here we go. Push him around. He don't punch when you do that. He's not that strong, Kurt. You're letting him feel like he's strong, man. You're giving him the ground. Kurt, listen to me. God, this is the eighth round. Please, man. Give me a little drill on him. Stay up on him. If you give me one drill, I guarantee you, you hurt him. Kurt, Yo, you think use you your speed, man. And stop backing up. Okay. Yo, side running. to side and stop it's backing up. Yo, come on, Kurt. I'm running workout. I'm running Come on, workout. where's that hard? Roy, what do you think of a corner where three guys talk to you at once? Very difficult to ingest all of that because there's so many instructions coming from so many places. But the main one was do the drill on them. They've obviously rehearsed sequences where Curtis is throwing punches and backing them up, and they want to see that from him. Seventh round, balanced attack for Golovkin, 17 of 52 jabs, 27 of 48 power punches, 44 of 100 overall. Tremendous round for Triple G. Curtis left eye starting to close from the overhand right of Triple G's. Crowd chanting Triple G, Triple G. So the avenues to a knockout that Rozier, his uncle and trainer, talked to us about yesterday. Concussion. Golovkin's the guy who knocked him down with a punch. Submission, I don't see either guy submitting right now. And physical abuse. And Golovkin so far is beating him on the physical abuse. Yeah, but Stevens in the last minute has landed a flush left hook, a hard body shot with the left hand, a right cross, all hard shots which don't yet discourage Golovkin in any way. Oh, good left upcut by Golovkin. Golovkin keeps his chin tucked well, even if he doesn't always move his head. So he does get hit, but... Really not. hard body shot by Golovkin, and Stevens backs up into the ropes again. He might have hurt him with that body shot. He did, Jim. He did. Now right-hand body shot. Stevens with a counter left hook to try to relieve the pressure. Golovkin, pressure, pressure, pressure. <laughs> hard right cross. Breaking him down now, Jim. Yeah, it looks like if we get a knockout by Golovkin, it's going to be the submission of real variety. Or a body or shot. physical abuse. He's, I, I see Curtis breaking down physically. Tremendous left-hand body shots by Golovkin. Three of them in this round. Thunder on the liver. And Golovkin's still alert enough to back off those up. Hard right-hand body shot. Uppercut. Stevens is taking some brutal abuse here in the eighth round. Still trying. The courage of Curtis Stevens. Bleeding from the nose now. Incipient beat down in Madison Square Garden. Stevens seeming to give in just a little bit here. Landed a left shot off the ropes. Harvey Dock watching, watching, watching. About to stop this one. Dangerous fight right now for Stevens because he's throwing back just enough to stop the ref from stopping it. Big right cross by Golovkin. Whipping Curtis Stevens into the corner. And he makes it out of round eight. Oh, oh, that's it. And they're going to stop it in the corner. That's a great stoppage. Andre Rozier had seen enough. That's a great stoppage because the temptation with a guy who hits like Stevens, who showed the heart that Stevens has tonight, getting up from the knockdown and still landing shots as he's getting beaten up, the temptation is to let him continue fighting because you think he always has a chance to win. They did the right thing, Jim. Absolutely right. That face tells you everything about why they stopped the fight. Golovkin closed the show, landing 56 of 101 power shots. Wow. That round. And it gets a Roy Jones wow. And <laughs> well, it wasn't the brutal thunderous one punch knockout that we've been accustomed to seeing from him. This was a gradual, systematic, technically pure beatdown. A real beatdown. Let's take a look at, at what prompted Rozier to make the decision at the end of the round, Roy. Yeah, he's the Gennady Golovkin, a constant on attack. He knew he had him hurt, 
He knew he was starting to show uh, bad vibes from the punches, showing the effects of him on his face, on his body, the way he was reacting to him. So Gennady just kept the attack up, and the referee realized that the kid Stevens looked like he didn't really want much more. I think it was a combination of the trainer and the referee. They both saw the same thing. The same they both came to the same conclusion. Exactly. Michael Buffer with the particulars on the TKO. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Harvey Dock at the urging of the challenger's corner calls a halt to the contest. The official time, the knockout comes at the end of round number eight. The winner by that KO victory, still undefeated and still middleweight champion of the world from Kazakhstan, the undefeated Gennady Triple G. When we take a look at CompuBox numbers, you are going to see some astonishing offensive numbers from Golovkin, who piled them up throughout the fight. In eight rounds, he lands 293 punches, 196 more than Curtis Stevens. He throws 491 more, landing 293 out of 794. Overall connect percentage, 37%. When you have that kind of power and you're landing 37% of your punches, you are hurting the opponent. And he did it constantly throughout the fight. What a courageous show by Curtis Stevens, who hung in on the basis of his strong power shots. He wound up landing 74 of them. But Golovkin at that same time was landing 185 out of 381, 49%. How many times have we told you that barometer for power punchers that they land 50% of their power shots. They're going to win the fight. Punch Zone will show you that Golovkin spreads it around. He throws hard left hands to the body and landed 34 of them. He throws hard right hands to the body and landed 24 of them. 93 left hooks upstairs, 91 right crosses upstairs, 51 times he lands on the chin. Some of those are uppercuts. He wound up taking 97 shots from Stevens. A lot of them were hard power punches. His chin held up pretty well as well. It was a heck of a show. Let's go to Max Kellerman with the winner. As usual, Gennady, congratulations. What was your plan coming into this fight? You know, my, my last question for him, just, I asked him, you serious? You serious? Okay, yeah, I'm serious. Okay, man, I respect box. I respect everybody. I respect everybody, athletes. I respect everybody sports, you know? This is a sport for me first. Hey, man, going to home, just tell your parents, just hi, I come back. Thank you. What was your plan for the fight? My plan just box, you know? I know I'm champion. I know I'm better. My power better, my speed better, you know, just... I show you for, for gym, for TV, for my fans, you know. People, who, people know who is who, you know. Were you more careful with him than you would be with another opponent because of his punching power? You seem to be very aware of his left hook counters. You know, Max, yeah, no, this is my strategy. Coach able to tell me, please, not crazy fight, not street fight, please box. Yes, uh, yes, of course, coach. This is my box. We're, when he got up from that second round knockdown, did it surprise you that he was able to get up from that and continue fighting? No, you know, he's very good too. You know, he's very, he's good athlete, he's a strong guy. You know, did he shake you up with any of those shots he, hurt, he hit you with in the middle rounds? No, not serious. Just after knockdown, uh, I feel it's great. I feel this is my fight. This is my fight. Quickly, what do you want now? Who do you want to fight now? Hey, guys, I am champion. I open for everybody. I am the same my situation. Thank you for HBO. Thank you for my team. Thank you for my fans. I'm open for everybody. Name one. Sergio Martinez, Peter Quillen, please, guys, I'm here, I'm staying here, I'm open, I want, I want. 
Thanks. Congratulations. We'll see you soon. Jim? Excuse me. All right. Final word from Roy Jones Jr., the pound-for-pound -pound king of the 90s. He might become the pound-for-pound -pound king of the sport at some point. Give him a report card. I think his report card was very good. He went out and showed the power puncher that he's just as dangerous as a power puncher as you are, and that's what the champion is supposed to do. All right. Thank you very much, all of you, for being with us. And right now, let's take a look ahead once again to November 16, Mike Tyson, Undisputed Truth. Don't forget that HBO's epic fall season in the ring continues next Saturday night. 130-pound champ Rocky Martinez matches up with fast-rising star Mikey Garcia, and Nonito Donaire squares off with Vic Darchinian. Immediately following the live fights, stay tuned for the premiere of Pacquiao Rios 24-7. November 16, 2004 Olympic gold medalist and current undisputed 168-pound champion Andre Ward makes his highly anticipated return to the ring against undefeated Edwin Rodriguez. November 23, live on pay-per-view, superstar Manny Pacquiao takes on Brandon Rios. For our full schedule, visit HBO.com and our HBO Boxing Facebook page. Next on HBO, stay tuned for Face Off with Max Kellerman. Max sits down with Manny Pacquiao and Brandon Rios as they discuss, among many things, their welterweight matchup on November 23. And then it's two days, Mikey Garcia, a unique account of Mikey Garcia in the final 48 hours before his fight with Juan Manuel Lopez this past summer. So now, for our entire HBO crew here in New York City, I'm Jim Lampley. Thanks for being with us for this edition of World Championship Boxing.